How it's made whiskey. Hi guys, a whiskey welcome to you. In today's video, we will be discussing how whiskey is made from ingredients to bottling. Before we continue, pour another glass and hit the subscribe button to learn everything about whiskey. So today we'll talk about the step-by-step -step process of making whiskey. This distilled spirit has a rich history and a fascinating production process from bourbon to scotch, Irish, and even Japanese whiskey. But before we talk about how it's made, let us discuss where it originated, the types of it, and how it affects human health. Whiskey was found in the records of ancient civilizations like Mesopotamia and was introduced into Scotland and from there evolved into different varieties. A rich history and rich flavors are synonymous with whiskey. It would be interesting to note that whiskey production in Scotland began by farmers with a grain surplus and not by distillers. They used an ancient technique used by Egyptians and Arabs which magically converted weak drinks into strong ones. This technique included boiling weak liquids and trapping the vapors in a snout-like tube cooled with water. The slow dripping liquid collected at the end of the cooling was nothing but concentrated alcohol. Sounds very similar to modern day distillation. Moving on to present day whiskey, Bourbon, Irish, Japanese, Canadian, and Scotch are some famous whiskies liked by everyone worldwide. There are three kinds of whiskey, single malt, grain, and blended whiskey. Single malt whiskey is made of barley, yeast, and water. Grain contains corn, wheat, or both. Blended whiskey is a mixture of different kinds of whiskey. So step by step, let us take you on a journey of learning how a small grain like barley or rye becomes a delicious drink while you subscribe to our channel to learn more interesting content. Before we delve into the art of whiskey making, let us understand a little science behind it. Did you know that alcohol is nothing but a byproduct of microorganisms? Yes, you heard it right. This process is called fermentation, where the microbes, especially yeast, digest sugars from the source, like grains, and produce alcohol. So the whiskey you drink is one of the miracles these tiny organisms produce. The steps in whiskey production are mashing, distillation, aging, blending, and bottling. The first and foremost step in making a whiskey is its ingredients. The popular saying, as you sow, so you reap, fits perfectly with the process of whiskey making because the better ingredients, the better will be the flavor of your whiskey. To make whiskey, one needs three important things, grains, water, and yeast. A variety of grains like corn, barley, rye, and wheat are used for production. These varieties of grains give different kinds of flavors to the whiskey. For example, scotch is made from malted barley, bourbon whiskey comes from corn, and rye whiskey comes from, yes, you guessed it, rye. It would be surprising for you to know that the quality of water is also very important in determining the flavor of the whiskey. Hence, it's important to use clear water for production. The choice of most distillers is spring water for its clarity and purity. The last ingredient required is yeast. And yes, the kind of yeast also affects the flavor of the whiskey. Now we have all things necessary for whiskey making, let's jump to the next step in the process, mashing. But before mashing, there is a small process called malting, where the grain is soaked in water in vessels called steeps. Oxygen is added to the vessel to help the grain absorb water quickly. And after the grain absorbs enough water, about 45%, it is left to dry. At this stage, the grain begins to germinate. The germination takes place in about four to nine days. During this period, the growth hormones help in the production of roots and leaf sprouts. The process of germination produces a lot of heat and it is turned around many times to distribute the heat evenly. After the length of germination reaches three fourths, the grain is dried over a kiln to stop germination and remove bacteria and mold. 
The grain now develops a sweet taste, but if peat is added to the fire, a smoky taste is developed in the grain. This grain is now sent into mashing. Now let's see how mashing is done. The grain is mixed with hot water serially at different temperatures in a mash tun and is continuously mixed with a rake. The first temperature of the water is 62 to 65 degrees Celsius. At this temperature, the amylase enzyme is activated and converts starch into different kinds of sugar. This is done for about 30 minutes and then it is drained. The mash is now mixed with water at 70 to 75 degrees Celsius, drained, and then a third time mixed with water at 80 degrees Celsius. This sugary liquid is now cooled down to 16 to 20 degrees Celsius, called wort, and is sent in for fermentation. Here it is mixed with yeast, which converts the sugars into alcohol and carbon dioxide in about four days. This fermented liquid is next sent in for its distillation. Now our whiskey has lots of other unwanted components along with alcohol. Distillation aims to remove these unwanted materials and leave only the alcohol content. Distillation is a process in which a liquid is heated and the different materials are collected at different times based on their evaporation rates. Hence, the fermented liquid is heated and the alcohol is collected. The distillation takes place in specialized containers called copper stills. The copper still contains three parts, the kettle where the boiling takes place, the gooseneck, and the cooler. The alcohol evaporates at a lower temperature, 78 degrees Celsius, than water and rises in the neck of the still, leaving water behind in the kettle. The vapors are condensed in the cooler and collected. This is called low wine with 20% alcohol content. The distillation is repeated in a smaller still and here alcohol with its various flavors is separated from the water. The shape of the still depends on the type of whiskey. The scotch uses a pot and the bourbon uses columns. Different flavor molecules like ethyl hexanoate, which tastes like apple, and diacetyl, which tastes like butter, are added. This is concentrated and has a higher alcohol percentage of around 60 to 70 percent. From this distillate, methanol, a toxic compound, is removed, which boils at 65 degrees Celsius, and other spirits which negatively affect the whiskey's taste are also removed. The final distillate is then partially mixed with water and then sent into the next process, called aging. In aging, as the name suggests, the distillate is stored in large oak barrels to give whiskey its unique flavor and taste. Aging is very important because 60 to 80% of the taste of whiskey is accounted for by several years of storage. Aging works on the principle of the alcohol leaching out flavors from the wood barrels. Sometimes the inside of the barrels is even charred with a flame to incorporate additional flavors in the whiskey. Charring helps in the production of a flavoring phenolic compound called guayacol. Another interesting phenomenon called angel's share also takes place while aging. The wood, when it breathes, causes around 2% of the whiskey to evaporate, and this is what we call the angel's share. Probably the angels are giving this whiskey its amazing flavor. Not only the distillation process and aging, but the surrounding climate also help in giving whiskey its unique flavor. After aging, the whiskey is now ready to be blended with other whiskies by storing it in used barrels or mixing it with other types of whiskies. This enhances the flavor of the whiskey even more and also increases the quantity. Lastly, the final product is now ready to be filled into bottles and sold. But before this process is started, the impurities are removed by filtration and only then is the whiskey bottled and sealed. Whew. And with this, the beautiful and detailed process of making a whiskey comes to an end. And as Raymond Chandler says, there is no bad whiskey. There are only some whiskeys that aren't as good as others. Thanks for watching, guys. Before you pour another delicious glass, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Cheers, and see you next time.